We've come to Google to get our first hands-on with their new Project Tango hardware, a new technology which, they say, could finally let computers understand the physical world in the same way as you or I. If it works, it could usher in a new way of interacting with technology. But if it doesn't, it'll just leave us waving our phones around like idiots. There is infrared um, camera on top of that and an infrared emitter right up here. And so that emitter shines uh, an array of dots over the whole room so that yes. lets it build up a, a 3D image. And then this last camera, the centre one, is that's a wide angle camera. And the combination of the RGB camera and the wide lens camera as well as the sensors track our movement and orientation more accurately around the world around us. Shani showed me a game based on Minecraft, a sort of Lego for the 21st century. But rather than moving with a keyboard and mouse, I could wander around my creations in the real world, looking at them from every angle. I have a little add button, and I can drop cubes. I can switch to stone brick, start building a tower. And now what I was trying to do is see how high... Would you like a chair? <laughs> there you go. It doesn't feel like I'm waving, waving a phone, waving a tablet and having it loosely translated into, oh, it's moving left, move left for a bit. Oh, it's moving right, move right for a bit. It very much feels like, like I am looking at something one-to-one -one overlaid on the world. But when she pulled out a giant orange Nerf gun, I got really excited. Project Tango's positioning is so accurate that I could play a first-person shooter with a physical gun, running around the room to avoid enemies. Like the VR stuff I've used, you often end up sat in a chair, and it, it looks real, but you're kind of tied to the chair because it's a bit too dangerous to wander around a real space. This is, in its own way, more immersive because, because I can check the real world and go like, oh yeah, no, I'm not going to trip up over anything or walk into a room. I'm checking behind me for stuff that I know is there in, in this sort of half real space. I'm gonna go to that corner and hope I don't bump into the chairs. Oh no, I bumped into the chairs. I've managed to back myself into a real world corner here. For me though, the most impressive demo was the simplest turning the tablet into a virtual tape measure for the real world. It may not be as showy as their games, but it's a better way of understanding how this technology could change our daily lives in the subtlest of ways. Here we go. And so what it lets me do is really simply, in this 3D model, tap one point, tap another point, and see the distance. And so my bag is 45 centimetres long. 90% of the time, 99% of the time, most of your life you don't need a tape measure. Sometimes you do, and it's really annoying not to have one. And I know it's not the fanciest example of it, but it's actually, it's just a really nice way of showing that, you know, as technology progresses, little irritations that used to exist in the world go away. I think what we've just seen, the, the Project Tango development kit, I think it is, it's a glimpse of the future. It's, it's not a revolutionary future, it's an evolutionary future. And actually, in many ways, that's, that's more interesting. As it trickles down into our lives, it will just make everything slightly better. Your smartphone's camera will get better because it will be able to focus because it has a knowledge of the 3D space that it's pointed at. If you've got an aerial drone, that will suddenly get better at avoiding objects. Google's made this, this toolkit and they're saying to the world, do what you will. And I think there's going to be some really exciting stuff come out of that.